Hey, Coach John Wolf here at the Onnit Gym. Today we're gonna to talk about the kettlebell swing, the one drill that fixes 99 problems. Just a few of the benefits you'll receive for swinging a kettlebell include a taller, stronger posture, conditioning that won't quit, a stronger core, and a kung fu grip. The first step to establishing a perfect kettlebell swing is to reinforce your hinge mechanics. For this, we're gonna take a slightly wider than shoulder width stance, keep our knees open, and then proud in our chest by drawing our elbows back. We're gonna to try to reinforce this mechanic through the whole kettlebell swing, so really feel those mid-back muscles engage. From here, we're gonna take a karate chop to the hips to focus our energy where the next part of the movement's coming from. Sitting those hips back, keeping your chest proud, a nice long spine gets us in an athletic ready position. This athletic ready position if we were wearing a football jersey, I should still be able to see your numbers on your chest. So no rounding and flexing of the spine, chest up and out, eyes out and forward, and you're almost ready to swing the kettlebell. Step two for your perfect kettlebell swing is to learn how to root and wedge into the ground appropriately. So we're gonna build off of our hinge mechanic that we already established. We're gonna focus on the placement of the kettlebell. The handle should be directly under your line of sight. So right below your eyes. This is gonna place the kettlebell in front of your feet and your base of support. That means you're gonna reach forward with your hands to grab the kettlebell handle. What you may notice is I actually have to lower my hips slightly to get a full grasp of that handle. That's okay so long as your shoulders stay higher than your hips. Next step is to drop your shoulder blades back into your back pockets and then think about bending the handle of the kettlebell, noticing that the elbows point back towards the inside of the knees. As we do, we're gonna drag the kettlebell base through the ground towards our feet. Not moving it, but building tension down there should reinforce all of the muscles on the backside of your body, readily, actively engaged, ready to start swinging with little risk of injury. Step three to the perfect kettlebell swing is establishing a powerful hike. Now, we have our hinge, we have our root and wedge, now, as we've done that, taking all the slack out, we're gonna be focusing on our hike. So before we do that, I'm gonna have you actually understand that the hike, the focal point is gonna be this triangle that's formed between the knees and up to your crotch. Your upper th inner thigh is where we're gonna take contact with your wrist and drive the kettlebell up and back focusing on maintaining a strong posture with that proud chest. See how that continues to recur here. Now, before we get going with the bell, doing a couple reps, touching the handle and reaching up and high into that triangle with the proud chest, reach and touch the handle, up and back into that triangle with the proud chest. This is important because if you reach down, the tendency, especially with weight, is for us to round our back and that puts us at a risk for injury. So, as we set, root, wedge, pull that kettlebell handle, take the slack out of our body, and then hike high into the triangle and back down. Resetting, feeling the full body tension before we hike again, high in that triangle. One more time, hike. And now we've set a strong and powerful back swing position. Just like a slingshot, the better we pull back, the more load we can express and power come forward. Step four for the perfect kettlebell swing is gonna be the drive and float. We're gonna be putting everything together for this fourth and final step, but let's demo what is important about this. From that hike position, most people will make the mistake of driving their hips forward, oftentimes in front of their toes to finish the kettlebell swing. This puts us into an extended position that over time is surely gonna make that lower back angry. Better is to, from that hike position, drive the feet down to stand as tall as possible. That still gets our hips to fully extend, but we're in a strong, tall posture that we wanna reinforce in the swing and throughout every part of our day. And then we're gonna be able to receive into that back swing, that hike, all of the weight from the kettlebell and pop back out for another repetition. Let's go ahead and demonstrate a few reps. Taking that slack out, getting ready. We're gonna hike, drive, and float. Notice that the kettlebell floats after my hips fully extend. 
and my legs lock out. Standing nice and tall, we're gonna be waiting for the kettlebell to descend and catch it with our full body to make sure we absorb that force back into our next hike. Key here is, it's like being a little kid. Don't overcomplicate it. Think about a really powerful granny pass and then catching a water balloon without popping it. Catching through a full range of motion and launching again. That's our kettlebell swing in four easy steps. After you've been working your two-handed kettlebell swing for a while, you may be looking to step it up a little bit. Call that progression. In this case, we're gonna be looking at a single-hand kettlebell swing. Now, what this adds is a lot more core stability. To control rotation and stay squared up, you're gonna to have to fire off your obliques at just the right time, just the right amount. In addition, since we're holding that kettlebell with one hand at a time, that shoulder girdle is gonna stay active and engaged, keeping the bell from flying away from you on every rep. Let's go ahead and demo a couple single arm kettlebell swings. We're gonna be working all the same mechanics, hike, drive. Now, you might notice I'm using the off hand to entrain with the kettlebell swing. Launching it back to amplify that back swing and then meeting the kettlebell handle at the apex of every rep. This keeps the timing element consistent with what you practiced in your two-handed kettlebell swing. Another great kettlebell swing progression is the alternating single arm swing. This is a lot of fun because not only does it build on what we developed in the single arm swing, all that rotational stability, all that shoulder blade activation, now we have a rhythmic change from side to side. And not only does that give you an opportunity to balance out the work component rep after rep, it also creates a smooth transition from hand to hand. This opens the door to a lot of fun transitional movements as well as flows. And you know, once you get some kettlebell skills under the belt, a little flow action is a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and demo a couple of these alternating kettlebell single arm swings. Loading up, mechanics stay the same fundamentally, but we're gonna change hands at the top. This really highlights the benefit of that swing of the free arm and meeting the handle at the apex of the swing. It loads you up perfectly and times that hand change while the kettlebell is weightless in the float at the top of each rep. If you're having a challenge with the kettlebell swing, it's great to have this drill in your back pocket. We call this the chest swing or the goat belly swing, and we're usually gonna use a lighter, light to moderate weight kettlebell for this drill because it's about posture as much as anything else. We're gonna take the base of the kettlebell at your belly, below your sternum. We're gonna grab the kettlebell by the horns, roll the shoulders back, really exaggerating that proud chest posture. Take that nice wider than shoulder width stance, soften the knees, spread those knees apart as we work that nice hinge mechanic and drive the hips through. A lot of times with the kettlebell swing, timing and sequence is a big issue. So take note, I can move slow into that back position, I can move slow into that ended hip extended position, and at all times, I'm stable and safe. I can work on timing. Slow on the way back, power on the way up. I can also work fast, back and forward. As we do this, we can work on some of the more elusive components of any dynamic exercises, timing, and sequencing. For more tutorials, click here. Make sure to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. And then go ahead and shoot something in the comment section. Let us know what you thought about this video and what you want us to cover in the future.